So today's presentation is brought to you by Microdesk. We are an AECO industry consulting firm. We've been around since 1994. We actually just celebrated our anniversary uh, two months ago. We currently have 12 locations across the US and have our one location in the UK, right in London. Our team is currently made up of over 190 AECO consulting specialists, including some software developers. Our team of specialists have industry backgrounds. Uh, myself, I've been in the industry for <laughs> over 25 years. I worked as an architect for about 10 years before moving out into consulting. Uh, everybody else also has similar backgrounds. We've actually done the work we've been in in the design or in construction. And our software development team can help you create content from the ground up or just modify or integrate different tools as well. So some of the different things that we do, we work heavily with building information modeling we can create custom content, we can create buildings for projects, uh, sites, we can work with companies on their strategy or overall workflow, create assessments and new business plans. We can help with managing, support, mentoring, and again, our application development team. Now, today's presentation is gonna be brought to you by myself. Uh, my name is Peter Marchese. <coughs> I'm a senior technology evangelist over at Microdesk. Uh, that means is I get to play with all the new technology and make sure it's actually working, <laughs> does what you need as opposed to just being something that's new and interesting. It has to actually get the job done. Uh, my background again is as an architect and I focus heavily on the cloud, emerging technologies and anything BIM. Uh, my co-presenter today is gonna be Jacqueline Brown. She's our strategic implementation manager. Her background is in civil and infrastructure. Uh, she's also awesome, was not paid to say that. <laughs> but the two of us are gonna be focusing on the two aspects of this technology. I'll be talking a little bit about the civil, sorry, the BIM 360 side of things. And she's gonna talk about the civil 3D and how that workflow and implementation can actually happen. Cool. So today's agenda, <clears throat> again, we're gonna go over BIM 360, general overview, a little bit under the design, some new features and how it actually works with civil 3D. Now, before we get into this though, I do just wanna ask the audience just a couple of quick questions, get an idea of what your backgrounds are and what uh, experience you're coming into this with. Okay, so the first one, just what's your role? You know, are you coming into this from a designer or engineer background? Are you a CAD BIM manager, finance team, et cetera? All right, good amount of people on that one. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next one is, have you actually used BIM 360 before? So it's to see if anybody who's attending has actually used the tools or the technology. Are you thinking about it or you tried before when it was, uh, you know, maybe glue and vol, uh, <clears throat> sorry, glue or Vela systems and you're curious about where it goes now? All righty. A uh, good percentage of, uh, about, th about two thirds of it is no, so that'll be good. We're going to be going on this uh, from a beginner's point of view for BIM 360. So give you a good overview of what it can do. And outside of BIM 360, are you currently using any cloud or mobile tools? So if you're out in the field a lot, are you using anything that helps you view content while you're out in the field, do checklists, uh, surveys, anything like that? Well, I got a few people, some people are planning on it. A uh, good amount of people, almost half are currently no. Okay, perfect. So hopefully after the end of this, you'll have some more questions on BIM 360 and you might have a new tool that you can take advantage of out in the field. All right, thank you very much for your interact, uh, interaction on that. I appreciate it. So let's get rolling. <coughs> BIM 360 for Civil 3D. So BIM 360 from Autodesk is their cloud collaboration service. Uh, easy way to think of it is kind of like Microsoft Office, where if you say Office, it could mean a lot of different things. It could mean Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI. It almost depends on who you talk to as to what the description is going to be for. And BIM 360 is similar to that. It works with a lot of different tools. It has a lot of different features, and it's built on a consistent code base, uh, Autodesk Forge down there. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. So depending on what your workflow is, what your uh, responsibilities or roles are, you could be using it for Q&A, cost management, uh, you can be getting data and analytics from there or focusing on coordination. Now with that, there's a good amount of tools that are available currently and there's more that are coming and they're also gonna be continued to be developed. Now the ones that we're focusing on in today's presentation are gonna be the ones that are highlighted on your screen. So you've got the BIM 360 document management. So that's the overall library, the consistent location for content storage in the BIM 360 next gen services. We're also gonna be focusing on BIM 360 design collaboration. So now 
up until about a month or two ago, if you said that, it always had to do with Revit. So what we're gonna do is touch on why this is actually available now for Civil 3D and how it could make your lives a little bit easier. Now, all these different tools here, with the exception of just a couple of them, like BIM 360 Ops and Plan, all of those come in a couple of different packages. Now, the packages that are available currently, you've got Document Management under Docs, BIM 360 Design, Glue, which is actually now called Coordinate, gotta update that slide, and BIM 360 Build. So these are the four main packages for BIM 360 at the moment. And the one that we're gonna be focusing on is the BIM 360 Design Package. <coughs> now, main goal for this, the current trends trying to fight in, is you have a lot more companies that are working remotely, whether it's employees working from home, uh, growing by uh, uh, starting new offices, or hiring people that are closer to a site, or you're just trying to work more collaboratively with other companies. The other thing is we're trying to save money, which can very easily be equated to saving time. With this, a lot of people are also moving to the cloud. So rather than having to uh, have a consistent network, whether it's IT costs, building servers, making sure that everything's always up to date, we're seeing more and more companies look at the cloud for many different reasons, whether it's, again, the Office suite or the BIM 360 suite or other suites. Now, some of the main things that you tend to get from this as a benefit is version control. So more than likely, everybody on this call has had an issue where they run into the same, what they think is the same file, and it's in three or four different places, and the names are different, but nothing is consistent. So you're trying to figure out, okay, well, which one of these has actually been updated recently, or is the most recent one, or is the official one? So you start trying to go through that route. The other thing that you end up seeing a lot is when people are maybe opening up the file, maybe it was opened up in an earlier version, things weren't designed to make sure that everyone's on the same release, or you're trying to work on something and you're noticing that it's read-only, and you don't know if there's something wrong or if somebody else is actually in the file. So then you have to actually start reaching out to people and finding out where is the file, who's in it, what are they doing. And communication is always key, but sometimes the technology that is uh, in our existing workflows doesn't necessarily help us with that communication. So one of the things that we have for BIM 360 is the ability to have version history. Every single time that I update my model or update my drawing, whether it's a file, could be a Word file, could be a Revit file, could be Civil 3D, InfraWorks. I'm able to actually track that history. I'm able to actually download specific versions if I needed to review them. If we make some changes and then say the client goes back and says, hey, we have to go back to the earlier version, no problem. There's a make current button there that actually just pulls that back and overwrites the current version. But again, we don't delete it. We just overwrite that with the next version and that one becomes the previous. The great thing is if we're trying to figure out, okay, well, we're on version nine or 10 or whatever, what's the difference? But one of the other features that we have here is our review process. Now, when we're working with things like CAD or PDFs, we have the ability to do a two layer overlay. So I can actually see that from version one to version two, okay, everything that is gray or black, that's consistent. It hasn't changed between those versions. All the things that are either blue or red, those are the things that are different between those two releases. So in this case, you can see that the contours were added in version two, and they also shifted the entrance over a little bit. And sometimes this makes it a little bit hard to really gauge what changed. The other option we have here is rather than looking at it in a two color overlay, I can also look at it with sort of a slider. So that might be a little bit hard to see there, but that little wiggling blue line, that is a line that I can slide from left to right on my screen. And as it moves, you can actually see kind of how it's wiping through and on one side, it's one version. On the other side, it's the other version. So as you move that back and forth, you can see it changing from one to the other. Think of it like in the old days where you have a couple of sheets of mylar or vellum, kind of close to that. Now, another thing it helps with is our project reviews. So most of us at this point have some kind of a commute and we're usually on our phones or trying to do work. One of the things we can't do is sit there and unroll a whole doc set and try to mark that up or review it on the train or bus or other services, or at the very least, it's not exactly easy to do. With BIM 360, it also helps out when you're trying to coordinate with the team and get a direction, get everybody sort of to have a consensus. So we have our project reviews where I can say, okay, here is the issue. Put a push pin in and say exactly where that is. I can track it. 
I can make sure that it's exactly where I need it to be. I can assign it to people and I can actually have a tracked activity of this. So everybody can chime in and we have a record of that and everybody sees where things are going. Now, this is easy to do in a browser, on my laptop, on my desktop, I can see the history on that. But again, the benefit of this is that it's accessible from anywhere. Whether I'm opening up my phone, my tablet, if I'm on Android or iOS, I can still come in and start to look at markups, I can make markups, I can track the history and check the problems or things they're working on. So I can actually make sure that everything is still being coordinated from anywhere. Now, the other thing about this is I can actually track my reviews, <clears throat> meaning that let's say I'm going through this and I've got all my issues here and I'm working on that. What happens if I wanna make sure that rather than fixing an issue, I wanna make sure that people have gone through and said, okay, it's past QAQC or we're ready to submit. So you can actually create reviews inside of BIM 360. And you have the option to set this up so it has the kind of workflow or approval that, uh, process that you need. So do you have a one or multiple step approval? Or do I wanna have an approval process that includes a group? So maybe your office has a QAQC team that includes four people. And all I know is I need two of them to look at this. I don't know which two, I don't really care, but the first two who have availability, I need them to review it. So you can actually create that kind of an approval with the groups too. Once there, I can send that up and I can assign it to specific people. I can make sure that only the people that have those rights or have that ability are set to review it. And I can define that by project. Now, the big thing here for BIM 360, especially when we start talking about design coordination, is how do I work with other people? Well, the easiest thing is that DWGs, I can upload them to the site, I can track them, I can monitor them, I can do all my markups, I can share them, and I can coordinate that way. InfraWorks, when I'm working in InfraWorks, I can actually take my model and it's stored on BIM 360. So again, somebody who maybe doesn't have InfraWorks or needs to look at it, they can still access it through the browser or mobile device. They can view the site, they can do markups, they can post issues, and they can interact with the rest of the team. They don't need the software. And if you're working with companies that are using Revit, one of the things that was added in last year was the ability to publish surfaces. So in this case, I can take my surface from Civil 3D and use BIM 360 in the desktop connector to sync that to Revit. So that made sure I had a good workflow with the people inside of Revit, taking my work, putting it in there, and making sure everything was lined up and that there was a, a good process for that. And for companies that were using a, a Vault to manage their files, last year's version, they actually added the ability to use BIM 360, almost kind of how a buzzsaw was in, used in the past. So that way our team inside the firewall was all on vault. It would manage things like file locking. And if I had to share it outside or pull files in from the outside, I can connect vault to BIM 360. Now, all of these services and workflows here, including the ability to, to just share a regular view out to the cloud for people to mark up, all of that's great. And all of that is just there as part of BIM 360 document management. The problem with all of these four right now is that it's sort of one directional. So like a good example here is with Revit or with Vault. If I'm sharing out my site to Revit, nothing happens in Revit that comes back and updates my site. Likewise with this, I'm sending my files back and forth, but it's not doing file locking between people in the firewall and those outside. That's really where the BIM 360 design component is gonna give us a lot of these benefits. Now, up until now, when people have said BIM 360 design, the focus was on the Revit cloud work sharing. Now, the thing with Revit is you could have multiple people in the same file, technically, at the same time. We're all working in our locals, but we're all interacting with that central file that is consistent between everybody. Now, BIM 360 design doesn't suddenly turn Civil 3D into Revit. It's not gonna make work sharing available. But what it does do is it allows us to collaborate in the cloud and it has automated file logging. So that's the really big thing here. So I'm opening up Civil 3D on my machine. My laptop's right here. Open up my file, and in the process of doing that, it now locks that file in the cloud. So somebody else in a different state, different country, they go to open up the same file, sorry, it's locked. And it lets them know that it, me, I'm the one who's locked it. And all of that is trackable. And all those other benefits that I mentioned, the ability to have version control, markups, issues, review process, 
actually create transmittals for official submittals. All of that is there because our content is stored in BIM 360. So this is allowing us to really collaborate and coordinate using BIM 360 as that backbone or as our network essentially for our projects. So this is just a basic overview of the process in terms of what it can do and some of the features inside of BIM 360. What's gonna happen now is I'm gonna turn this over to Jackie and she's actually gonna show you. So Jackie, I'm gonna make you the presenter now. Okay. All right. Sorry, give me While she's doing that, everybody remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop that into the Q&A box as part of GoToWebinar. I'm sorry, Peter. Um, I don't know if they moved the button. I can't see where to share my screen. There we go. All right. <clears throat> can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to focus mostly on the civil 3D part of this. Um, uh, by the way, you need to have civil 3D version 2020.2. You also need to have the desktop connector for all of this to kind of sync properly. So um, I'm just going to show you kind of a couple examples of how we can use the cloud to coordinate and um, post our drawings to the cloud. So on the start tab of Civil 3D, they kind of changed it a little bit. And you can see that we do have um, kind of three different tabs here. One of them is Recent, and one of them is BIM 360. So um, on Recent, you can see all of the different files that you've had open recently. And you can see what the file type is. So some of these are local. And some of these are in the cloud. They're in my BIM 360 project. So if I switch to the BIM 360 tab, this connects you directly with your BIM 360 project. So um, you can, if you have multiple folders that you are um, able to access, you can see them listed here. So if you need to change to a different project, it would be listed within here. And it, within that project, you can see which drawings are in the cloud in BIM 360. You can also see which ones are locked. So if it is open by somebody else, you can see that it's locked here. You can also see who has it locked. I, am, I happen to have it locked right now. I have it open. Um, and you can also see the time and the date and everything like that. You can also see what version it is and who authored it and also you know, when it was modified. So I do have this particular drawing open, so I'm gonna jump over to that. Now, it, it really is kind of like you're, you're used to just working off of your network. It, it works pretty much the same way. When we're going to um, create data shortcuts or create extracts, if they're saved to your BIM 360 project, it's going to work exactly the same way as it does if it was saved um, to your network. So uh, I'm just going to do an example of how we can um, create our data shortcuts. So it, it pretty much works the same way. I'm going to right click on my data shortcuts over here and I'm going to say set working folder. I'm going to go in and find my BIM 360 project. And here it is, so I'm going to select that folder to place as my, my working folder. Now, um, there's no data shortcuts in there yet, so I'm going to create a new folder to place my data shortcuts in. So I'm gonna say new data shortcuts project folder. And this is the same thing that you do when um, you are working off of a network. So I'm just gonna give it a name, I'll just call it data shortcuts. It should see your working folder path right here. And um, it's showing my C drive and, and all of that because I have the desktop connector. So it's syncing with my project in the cloud through the desktop connector. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to that. And then you should see your path populate right here. 
for where it's going to save your data shortcuts. So then I'm gonna right click again and say create data shortcuts. I've got a few, a lot of different things in this drawing. I have some surfaces, I have some alignments. So I don't wanna do everything. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe share my existing ground surface and my alignments, let's say. I also have pipe networks and corridors in here and you can, um, you can create data shortcuts for those as well. So I'll just say okay to that. Okay, so now when I expand surfaces here, I should see my existing ground, expand alignments, center line alignments, and I can see all of my alignments here. So you can see that we do have data shortcuts and it would um, create those data shortcuts in the folder that I specified. So I'm gonna go jump back over to the start menu and I'm gonna open up my other drawing called Civil 3D Extra. Give it a second to open. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull some of those data shortcuts in. So I'll right click on my existing ground surface here, say create reference. And I can choose, maybe I'll pick a different style here. It all depends on what's in your drawing. And there's my surface. Maybe I'll do a couple alignments too. We'll just leave everything as is. That looks like my uh, my site is not matching up with my alignments, but that's okay. Okay, so you can see that those are in there now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a change to something. So I'm gonna jump back over to my Civil 3D objects drawing. And it's, it's, you know, my alignments aren't really matching up with my site, but let's just say I'm going to kind of shift this alignment a little bit. I'm going to, we need to maybe do something like this. And maybe I'll chop this one down to here. Okay. So it's going to be an obvious change that I made. I'm going to save this drawing. And I'm going to jump back over to my other drawing. And you will see that data shortcuts have changed. It will pop up a little, um, a pop up like it does normally whenever something changes. Now you can also tell something has changed if you go to the collaborate tab. We have this check reference status. And actually, I'm sorry, this is just for extra. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that for the extra one. I'm sorry. For the data shortcuts, it's gonna pop up whenever something changes, you'll see it down here. So I'm just gonna say synchronize. And it's gonna go through all of my data shortcuts and change them. So you can see that it made that update there. Okay, so now let's do something with um, the XREF. So this is the XREF drawing. Um, maybe let's say, these are just kind of polylines here. Maybe my right away increases. So maybe I'm going to shift um, my right away over, let's say, 20 feet. That way. And I'll delete that one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and oops, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and save this drawing. I'm going to jump back over to here, and I don't have that drawing. Um, extract in here yet, so I'll go ahead and do that. Now you're going to extract it just the same as you would. You're going to go find it in BIM 360 in your project. And it works just the same way. You can choose relative path, overlay, attachment, whatever you typically do. And there you can see it is. And um, I didn't have uh, I didn't have it in here yet, so we weren't going to be able to see the change. So let me just do that one more time. Um, I'll do another 20 feet. I'll delete that one, and I'll save it. 
then I'll jump back over to this drawing and I'm going to use this check wrap reference status. I don't know why it's telling me that because I did make a change. Um, that's interesting. Maybe because it's open or something. You typically should see if, if something happens, it will tell you that um, there was a change. Yep. So you have your little button on the bottom there that's telling you it actually has changed that check reference status. Reason why that's not actually showing yes. up just yet is it just hadn't finished synchronizing to BIM 360 yet. Oh, gotcha, okay. So yeah, it might just take a little bit of time to save it up to BIM 360. Maybe I'm just moving too fast for it. But yeah, if the file is, if you have the file open, you'll see a pop-up um, if somebody changes something. It ju it's just like it does now. So I'm just gonna reload it. And there's the change. Okay, but um, this, this works if, if you, yeah, I guess you have to give it a little bit of time to sync back up. Um, but it will tell you that your your draw one of your XREFs has changed, and I think it does work for data shortcuts as well. So um, it's it's not going to change it; it's not going to um, fix it for you. So it's just kind of a, a thing that you can do to check to see if anything has changed. But um, but you can use that to see if there are any changes made by anyone. Okay, so that's basically what I had to show you. I'll um, send it back over to Peter. Or can you just you. take control, Peter? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't, yeah. There's two organizers. I'm not sure which one you are. Yep, I got it, don't worry. <laughs> okay. There we go. Got it. Yeah, just one second. A couple of issues with go to webinar today. All right, there we go. There we go. So what I'm going to show you now is a little bit more on the browser side of things. So when Jackie was working inside of the project, inside of Civil 3D, this is the project that she was working in. So right now I'm looking at my dashboard. The dashboard can show me things like the address, the weather, design packages, any issues. I have other tools like BIM 360 Build. I can look at things like the RFIs or checklists as well. This is all customizable. So it just depends on what it is that I want to show. If I have some other tools, so maybe I have like site cameras, I can actually have that set up where I can be looking out in the field and seeing what's going on. If I have models or drawings, I can set that up to actually be on my dashboard as well. So I don't even have to navigate to the drawings. Now, when I wanna to go to my drawings, I can just click on this and say, I wanna to go to my document management. In that case, that's where all of our content actually is. And I'm just gonna refresh this real quick. Now, while Jackie was working, she made a couple of changes to the files, and each time she did that, she saved the file. What you're gonna notice here is that she's at their one file and the other one, and I'm looking at these. I can see that they're currently locked, and I can see when they were locked and who locked them. So basically, who's in that file? And Jackie's still in it, so perfect. It still is locked. It's taking care of that. Now, let's say I'm the PM, and I'm just curious, so what's been going on today? So I click on that, and I see it's got a couple of versions. With BIM 360, every single time that you save for the CAD files for Civil 3D, it will actually version that. And this is not a problem because you have unlimited storage. But I can come in here and I can just view it. If need be, I can roll something back. What I'm gonna do is actually compare versions. So I wanna see what changed between version three and version two. So that, that maybe there's different views I wanna look at. In this case, I'm gonna go for the 2D view though. I'll say compare. And then that slide I showed before with the different overlays, this is gonna allow me to actually see that change. So in this case, I can see that she changed that, <coughs> the location of the line and the setup. And if I wanted to look at that with this, and I can kind of slide this right to left, 
and I can actually wash and see the change that way. So it allows me to look at things and really get an understanding of that change in a way that makes sense to me. Now, one of the questions that came up earlier was related to lag time. So what basically happens is as I'm working on this inside of <coughs> Civil 3D, every time I'm working in that, I'm still working locally on my PC. What actually happens is those files are cached locally. I can actually see them here in my BIM 360 desktop connector. Basically gives me a mapped drive to the cloud service. For me, I haven't actually opened up the file, so it's not cached. If it says not cached, it just means that I haven't tried to open it yet. It's not downloaded, so it's in the cloud. If I did want to work on this, I can always tell it that what I'd like this to do is actually download that file. That now shows that it's transferring and downloading, and now it's going to be cached. And I can see that Jackie's the author, and it's actually locked by her. So if I did need to do something, I could always reach out to her and say, hey, can I hop into the file? Could you save it? Now, this process is pretty quick. As long as you have a internet connection, you know, that's not on a dial-up, you should be fine. And the one thing you want to watch out for is that if I am looking at this, this is my sort of pending actions for my desktop connector. If I'm wondering why something hasn't shown up on the cloud yet, I can always take a look at this and see if maybe there's a problem or if maybe I opened up five or six files and it's just doing one at a time. But it's not instant where if I'm on the same file or same computer or network as somebody else, it still actually waits for a few seconds to make sure, okay, are you done making changes and saving? Okay, now I'm gonna save it to the cloud. So it does give me a little bit of leeway time on that. But the uh, locking, that is instant. Any other questions from anybody? Definitely, please feel free to put those into the Q&A poll. So other than that, using Civil 3D with BIM 360 is meant to be pretty invisible. You're in Civil 3D. I'm opening it up from that new dialog window. So you've got your dashboard here. I can see my files. I can go to BIM 360 and navigate to the projects I have access to. But once that's done, you're basically just using Civil 3D. You have a couple of extra features on the Collaborate ribbon for the uh, ability to just ping and make sure that everything's been changed. Just depends on what I want to do. And then I go to the different accounts that I might be working on, go to the correct projects that I might be working on. So in this case, the one that we've been showing is, it also allows you to have a search, which makes life a lot easier. <laughs> and then just navigate to where that file is. So it's doing all the work for you in the back end to try to keep things nice and simple. And again, it lets me know when it's locked. Uh, good question. So question here is, do you print sheets from 360? So not necessarily. So if I've got my model in the cloud, I can print it from there. But for most projects, we're typically still seeing people printing it from Civil 3D because that's actually where your sheet sets are going to be if you're doing like a batch print or a batch plot. So most of the time, if I'm in my browser here, so let's say I'm going to click on this, I can see all the different views that might be in there. I don't have a title block on this one, but if I wanted to, I could have that there. And you're, for the most part, using that print dialog. This is great because if you actually do have markups on here, I can print it with the markup and I can create a new PDF from that. But again, most project printing is done from the authoring tool at the moment. I've been mentioning that this, uh, there are different packages for BIM 360. Again, the one that we've been focusing on is the design one. That's the one that gives you access to the cloud work sharing as well as collaboration for Civil 3D. You actually don't need a, uh, an extra seed of this. Sorry, let me rephrase that. If you already own BIM 360 design because you were using Revit, that same seed can be used for Civil 3D. So you're still assigning it on a per user basis, but you don't need to buy anything else. It's not an add-on or an extra tool. It's just part of the BIM 360 design service. And that gives you access to the different tools that are part of BIM 360. And on the Forge side of things, you have a lot of external data systems that you can connect to. And Autodesk actually has a lot of companies that they're already working with that are creating those uh, plugins. So if you work with Assemble or you're working on Rumbix, Let's say that you're trying to do more QTO on a, or estimating. So there's a lot of different components that are already out there that are creating integrations with BIM 360 that'll allow you to expand its functionality or connect to other services. 
Autodesk is not trying to make sort of a, a, a walled garden where everything has to be done there. So if you're using other tools, they just want to make sure that everything can interact and avoid the issues of having, you know, my data in 15 different places and not really knowing where it is. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this up and go into the QA. So I've got a couple other questions here. Uh, so another question here is how do licenses work? So licenses for BIM 360 are on a per user basis. So essentially, if I have somebody on my team that I need to invite to a project, what I would end up doing is going to that project, and I add them in here, and determine what services they needed to be added into. So in this case, here is taking a seat of BIM 360 build, coordinate, and design because of the different aspects he's in there. If he no longer needs to use design, I can uncheck that and basically pull that off of him. So adding people to projects, adding people to services is actually quite easy. The one thing with the BIM 360 design is that it allows a user to use their license on anyone's hub. So like right now we're on the Microdesk hub. If Akira got invited to another company's uh, project, he could use his Microdesk entitlement on that hub. But I can take it away from him and give it to another team member if he no longer uses it, But they, because they are uh, user-based. Uh, another question is, can this be act actually like a CDE? Yes. So this is, a now, this is now allowing me to have sort of a, a cloud-based project service where my files are on the cloud. Anybody can access them that has the correct permissions. And you have full control over who can see, do, or access this content. So like on the civil and infrastructure folder, if I look at this, I can see who has permissions. These are all my project admins. Then I have the other people here. So anybody from Microdesk, they have a specific level of rights. And then anybody from Acme Consulting. But I can manage those permissions. I can change what those are. I can make it so that people have only the ability to view files. They can download content or only upload. These are per folder based. Mm -hmm. uh, another question, will this work for regular AutoCAD or just Civil 3D? As it stands right now, this only works for Civil 3D. Uh, as Jackie mentioned, you do need 2020.2, 20, uh, the latest service pack. That will allow you to do this regular AutoCAD or AutoCAD architecture, those can use the desktop connector to open files from or to save files to, but it will not do the automatic locking. So what you essentially need to do is manually lock that file. You can right click on it and tell it to lock, and then you can right click on it and tell it to unlock. Part of the BIM 360 design fe uh, feature is the ability to, uh, to automate that process. Any other questions from anybody? All right, if anybody does, please feel free to pop that in there. I'll keep an eye on that for another minute or two. Uh, while I'm checking out that, just wanna let you know about some upcoming webinars we have. Uh, next year, we have our Discovering Dynamo practical uses for project managers. So a lot of people still think Dynamo is mostly for modeling or making organic shapes. It's basically a scripting tool, and we're going to be going over some of the great, great ways we can take advantage of that as a PM. Uh, that'll be on January 14th. We're also going to be doing our first webinar and announcing our uh, partnership with a service called Plannerly. So it's a great new cloud tool that allows you to work on your projects and manage the BIM planning. You're working on your execution planning and making sure everything is where it needs to be, when it needs to be there. And the date on that hasn't been set, but keep an eye out, and we'll be announcing that shortly. And is there another question? Uh, is there a way to get a license for, <laughs> there is no way to get a free license for a year. What you can do is get a 30-day trial for BIM 360 design and BIM 360 document management, as well as the other services. The one thing I do have to say, though, is I don't believe the BIM 360 design trial will work for collaboration for Civil 3D as of yet. So right now, that trial is focused solely on Revit. If there are any other questions, you can always feel free to reach out to us. 
Uh, we have our phone number and email that anybody can reach out if they have any basic questions or want to see anything else. We also have our social media channels. This webinar was recorded and we, we will be posting it on our YouTube channel shortly. Thank you very much for everyone's time. We really appreciate it. For everybody who's attended all of our different webinars this year, we definitely appreciate it. Have a great and safe holiday. And if anything else comes up, anybody has any questions, always feel free to reach out. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.